Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and this is going to be my week one battle for the UBL, the Ultimate Battle League. We are going up against Frosted, aka Nadia, and she is the coach of the Copenhagen Saws Bucks. Now, if you did miss my team builder, I do recommend you guys go check it out. It's the last video on my channel. But let me do a quick rundown for you just in case you don't have time. I do have a Choice Scarf Diggersby, I have a Fake Out Retaliate Megalopony, I have a Defog Roost. Thunderwave Air slash Togekiss. I have a physically defensive Heatran with Rocks with Sugarberry. I have a Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin Drudagon for taking on a Victini. And I also have a Calm Mind Rock Polish Rest, Stored Power Necrozma. And so let's take a quick look at Frosted's team. She has Rotom Wash, Ampapom, Gudra, Piloswine, Pidgeot, and Kartana. So I'm very disappointed right off the bat not to see the Victini. I feel like I prepped pretty hard for it. Both my Heatran and my Dredagon are pretty much designed 100% to take that thing on. Um, they, you know, they're still somewhat useful versus the rest of the team. Like, you know, Heatran is good versus Pidgeot. Dredagon is good versus Ambipom and Kartana and things like that. But that was a good bit of my prep that's sort of down the drain. Uh, a few things I'm relieved not to see. Uh, I don't see a Silvali, so that means there's going to be no Dark-type on Frosted's team, which is very nice. Um, I guess those are the main things. Uh, Rotom is probably the thing that I'm most annoyed by with this team, uh, just because Rotom is always annoying. It's got such good dual stabs, and I don't really have a great way to switch into it with a team that I've brought. I guess Dredagon resists the dual stabs, but it doesn't really want to get burned. I do have Facade on my Dredagon. Not necessarily for that reason, but it, it will come in handy for that. It was more just in case he, uh, she brought like a Will-O-Wisp uh, Victini, which I did face in a mock. So uh, that could definitely have been an option, but obviously not since she didn't uh, bring Victini. Uh, but yeah, I can switch it in, take a Will-O-Wisp, and then go for Facade and do decent damage to the most, uh, you know, to the broad majority of her team. Uh, other things that are potentially annoying, Kartana, if it gets up to plus two, can be scary. Uh, because either it is, like, I guess if it's an attack boosting nature, it's not so bad, because I can revenge kill with a Lopany. But if it's a speed boosting nature, then it's kind of spooky. Um, I do have options with Heatran and Duretagon to potentially take one, but those two mons are pressured quite a bit by those mons that I mentioned earlier. So any chip on those means Kartana can be scary. Um, yeah, that's basically all of my initial thoughts. So in terms of leads, uh, it's sort of hard to say what a good lead matchup is. Uh, I guess her best leads, you, you might see like Pidgeot or Rotom as common leads, or you could have like a fake outing uh, uh, Ambipom as well. Since I don't really have like an obvious lead, I'm just going to do the lazy thing and lead with my Choice Scarfer. So that is going to be my Diggersby. Whatever I see, I am going to just U-turn out on it and then go into an appropriate check. Uh, just because that sort of seems like my best option in this scenario. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hit play and wish good luck, have fun to Frosted. And uh, we're going to see just how this battle turns out. Um, this is, you know, my first Wi-Fi battle in a few months. Ever since uh, GBA D-League ended, I haven't played really in any Wi-Fi games. So it'll be, uh, you know, trying to get some nerves off and uh, making sure I don't misplay. Uh, like I did, uh, you know, in several GBA matches. Uh, but that's all good. So she reads off with her Rotom versus my Diggersby. And I uh, do just go ahead and U-turn. So that's good. It confirms that the Rotom is not any sort of weird Scarf set. It's not going to hit me with a Scarf Hydro Pump or anything like that. The U-turn does a surprising amount of damage. So that suggests that it's not physically defensive. It probably is still max HP. But it's sort of hard to determine, uh, you know, if it's uh, got attack investment or if it's got, like, spit investment. So uh, goes for a Hydro Pump. And her Hydro Pump does a decent chunk of damage. It suggests that it probably doesn't have any... Uh, special attack investment. So either she's a Spadef Rotom, or it's like a fast, fat uh, Rotom. Either way, uh, I make a double expecting some sort of status move, most likely will o -Wisp. It turns out to be Thunder Wave, which is actually a little bit more annoying than Burn, in my opinion. But I go into my Necrozma, because I figure if the Burn is going to come, I would rather be Burned on my Necrozma than anything else. And, um, you know, I don't think that this Rotom can necessarily do a ton of damage to me, and I kind of have an opportunity to go for Calm Minds here. Uh, I guess I, I overestimate the natural bulk of Necrozma, at least on the particular set that I have. I don't even have max HP investment on this set. Um, but the nice thing is, is that I do get off the Calm Mind, I don't get para uh, paralyzed, and uh, that's going to boost my Spadef, which is going to reduce the amount of damage that this Hydro Pump is going to do. 
So there is going to be another Hydro coming out here. Uh, based on that damage, I should be able to take another. And I'm going to go for a Rock Polish now. And the reason I go for Rock Polish here is because uh, now on this turn, I can uh, go for an additional Calm Mind while I'm out speeding. And uh, it, it just to me, it sort of made sense in my head that that was going to be the way that I take the least amount of damage. So I do go for a second Calm Mind here. And um, she is just going to stay in and click Hydro Pump once again. It's funny, we're both sort of getting lucky. I'm getting lucky in the sense that I haven't gotten full parried yet, and she's getting lucky in the sense that she hasn't missed a Hydro Pump yet. Uh, so it's just going to be, it's sort of like a game of chicken, right? Like, who is going to uh, get hurt first? But luckily, we do not get paralyzed, and we are able to get off that rest. And that is going to get us nice and full. And we are at plus two special attack, plus two special defense, and plus two speed. And so with this setup, uh, we should be able to at least two-shot, if not one-shot, everything on the team. The EV spread that I had was specifically to two-shot an Assault Vest Max HP Gudra with stored power with this spread. Um, if this is a Spadef Rotom, this is a very good chance to kill. Um, it does like 97% min or something like that. Uh, I think it's more likely that, that she was a fast Rotom just with Max HP. And so we do end up taking that out in one shot. And um, she goes into Piloswine. And so I go to the damage calc, and even if it's an adamant Piloswine, an Earthquake into Ice Shard combination is not going to be able to take out uh, my uh, my Necrozma. And uh, I stand a much better chance of uh, one-shotting her Piloswine if I get up another Calm Mind. Um, and that also helps me out versus things like Gudra again and things like that. Uh, so it seemed worth it just to go for one more Calm Mind and take the EQ damage. And that's what I do, and I end up taking out the Piloswine that way. Whether it's the right play in the long run, not 100% sure. But now the Ambipom does come out. This does scream Fake Out a little bit, um, but it shouldn't kill me. And um, I'm going to stay in once again and uh, just click Stored Power. And she's going to set in her Gudra. And so... Uh, if this is Assault Vest, maybe it can take it, but obviously I'm going to be able to outspeed and hit it with uh, second stored power, be able to take it out. We're not going to find out what it was, though, because we do land a critical hit on that Gudra. So, you know, it's not really that unfortunate again, because I was just going to be able to click stored power a second time and be able to hit it. Um, so now the Ambipon does come back in. It is in position to knock me out with a Fake Out. Uh, even though my Necrozma's pretty much done its job, I don't really have a reason to leave Drudagon out here. Like, I have every reason to bring it in, right? Uh, because I can get off some pretty nice damage on this Ambipom just going for Rough Skin, Rocky Helmet. And, like, yes, is, you know, am I playing for Differential here? Yes. Is that totally necessary week one? I'm not sure. But I did just finish an MPL where I was tied with Deebs for the last playoff spot, and he did advance uh, over me because I didn't have enough differential. Uh, like we we had the same differential, um, and like he got in from ahead of me from the head-to-head -head victory that he got. But if I had had one more differential point, that head-to-head -head victory that he had would not have mattered, um, and I would have been able to get in. So I, you know, even though it's week one, I'm happy to take any differential points when I can get them. And so for that same reason here too, once the Ampopom goes down, I do elect to uh, preserve my Dredagon, and uh, I go into my Heatran, which is my best way of dealing with Mega Pidgeot. And so all I need is a little bit of damage on this thing, and I can potentially kill it with Frustration on my Lopunny. Um, I do just go for the Lava Plume as she goes for Hidden Power Ground, but luckily I do have my Shookaberry. You know, I am well prepared for that. And I got off the damage that I need here. Uh, in order for Lopunny to kill. And so, with this next turn, like, I don't need, really need any more damage. I'm just going to go for a Stealth Rock. Because, you know, why not? Like I said, it's not... I don't need to go for Lava Plume again. Um, I'm just going to go for those rocks. And uh, she overpredicts, unfortunately, and goes for Hurricane. Um, and that does give me the opportunity to get up those rocks. So in case it's something weird, like a Sash Kartana, we now break that Sash, and we are going to be able to kill the Kartana with our Lopunny, which is really great. Now a Hidden Power Ground is going to come out again to take out our Heatran. I could have gone into Togekiss, uh, and I was thinking about it, but uh, there's just no reason. Like, in, like, in that situation, I think it was a little bit more risky uh, to make that sort of play, even though it would have present, potentially preserved me differential. Um, so now, after my Heatran goes down, I can go right on into my Lopunny, and I do click High Jump Kick this turn. The reason being, it's definitely guaranteed to kill the Pidgeot, 
and if for some reason she just got, decides to go into a Kartana, I could one-shot that as well. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. The Kartana go, does go down. It kind of made sense for her to to try and, and do that play, because potentially a Kartana could still have, have stolen the game if it was the if it was the right set. Like I was explaining, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> Kartana is really scary since my Heat Trans been eliminated and my Dreadagon's at a very low amount of HP. Uh, so, you know, I thought she might try to make something happen. It was a pretty drawback free play to go for the high junk. Hit. The only drawback would be potentially missing. Um, but it's okay. Like if she was, uh, if she was Scarf. Uh, Kartana, then uh, I could go, you know, I could go, I had my Toga Pit, my uh, Toga Kiss left, my Diggers B, my Dredagon, my Necrozma. I guess the Dr uh, Diggers B and Toga Kiss were the only ones that were really healthy, but like depending upon what move uh, that uh, Kartana go went for, could have gone into either my Diggers B or my Toga Kiss. Like if it went for Leaf Blade or Sacred Sword, I could have gone into Toga Kiss. If it went for uh, the uh, Smart Strike, I could go to Diggers B and basically get a kill. Um, and then if the Kartana is not Scarf, after I go for, like, a Frustration, I could just go for a High Jump Kick and then kill it anyway. So, uh, it, there, it, there were some possibilities there, but I think I was covered in most situations. But anyway, <laughs> long story short, we're going to end up with a 5-0 victory in Week 1. And uh, it's a really nice start to the season. I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, I'm sad that it wasn't the biggest victory of Week 1. There were uh, there was, a, I think, at least one, maybe even two 6-0 victories in Week 1. Which makes sense, like, people are getting adjusted to their teams and trying to figure out, like, what the weaknesses are, so, so, so games like that are, are bound to happen, but still, I was pretty excited uh, with the performance of Necrozma in this game, it uh, really uh, caught Frosted off guard, and, um, it, you know, really uh, applied a ton of early game pressure. I wonder if we had not allowed that Earthquake damage, if we would have uh, been able to get a 6-0 sweep with Necrozma, but that's just being greedy, right? Like. Uh, it's not necessary to, to 6 out your opponent, um, you know, even though differential is important. Uh, but I want to give a big shout out to Frosted for being a really good sport uh, about the about the battle. Uh, you know, she was in good spirits afterwards, and I know that she's going to bounce back and uh, have a really amazing season. She's got a solid team, and uh, she's really learned quite a bit about the format uh, in the last few months, it seems. Uh, and uh, PGBL, she's caught, uh, caught a couple of W's in the recent weeks, so uh, that's really good on her. I'm sure she'll get in the swing of things in the UBL. And that is going to lead us to our Week 2 battle, which is going to be versus Serene Grace. And uh, I don't... Uh, I have only just recently gotten to, to know Sarah a little bit, and uh, we did the draft stream together, and uh, she was a lot of fun, uh, actually. Um, you know, sometimes you meet strangers and you, like, don't really know how to interact with them, but she was always, uh, just, like, very, I don't know, she's easy to talk to, and she's, like, very goofy, and, uh, you know, I like her a lot for that reason. Uh, so, I'm really looking forward to battling her. Uh, she's got a cool squad with Tapu Bulu and Halucha and Mega Charizard X. It's gonna be a big challenge, but I think we're gonna be up to it. And, uh, before we close off the video, just a couple of thanks to say. Big thanks to the front office for all the help with the team. Uh, big thanks to, uh, Blue Rogue for joining my team. I want to give a shout out to Skyrander, who helped me record this battle. I was having some trouble with Citra uh, with the latest update, um, so he was able to record the battle for me. So big shout outs to him for helping out and uh, being available at a moment's notice. Uh, really, really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the channel for other gaming Pokemon content. And until the next time, I'll see you guys later.